Hey friends, welcome to the Raising Boys and Girls podcast. I'm Sissy Goff. And I'm David Thomas. And I'm Melissa Trevathan. And we're so glad you joined us for this conversation. Let's dive in. Award-winning songwriter and author Ellie Holcomb has released the newly expanded edition of her best-selling devotional, Fighting Words, along with her scripture-based album, All of My Days. As a modern-day psalmist, Ellie has created a beautiful collection of curated psalms that have personally carried her through difficult times and played an encouraging role in the lives of her listeners, me included, through her Memory Mondays, where she sings scripture verses to songs each week. Fighting Words Expanded Limited Edition features 10 bonus devotionals, new interior flourishes, and an extra art piece inside. Nashville resident and native, Ellie has recently surpassed more than 500 million global streams of her music, as well as 500,000 copies of her books sold. Over the years, she has released music with her husband, Drew Holcomb and the Neighbors, before beginning her solo career in 2014. She has also been part of the beautiful Faithful Project, which included the song, A Woman, with Amy Grant. This year, Ellie will be touring on select dates with Lauren Daigle on her world tour and co-wrote their hit song, Be Okay. We are so excited to invite you into this conversation with the delightful and wise Ellie Holcomb. We've been counting down the days to get to have you back on. I mean, <laughs> Ellie, just like, I mean, we would do anything with you. We would go sit in a field somewhere and talk with you, <laughs> hang out with you in any place, any capacity. But it's so fun to get to have you back on the podcast. It's really fun to be here. You're just the best. Y'all are. Well, I love being with you. We were talking about you earlier. We were recording a little video and we were like, she is sunshine walking into a room, <laughs> which you are. Right there. I tell you what, we got a lot of sunshine this summer. <laughs> that, that is the truth. <laughs> we're, just, we're soaking it all in. We are soaking it all in. And my garden's thriving. Oh, Loves it. good. <laughs> I don't love it being in uptown. Ooh, I'm so hot all the time. You got to be wet. You got to oh. be in water, basically. Yes, absolutely. And that's the that's her way. Yes, through. Yes, but I've thought about you so much at uptown. Oh. I sit. So you and your parents wrote a song that we had painted on a door. That we left at Hopetown. Did you know that? I don't know if I knew it was on a door. It's on It's on this cool old door, and it sits right behind us when we're leading worship. Oh. And it has, I think we gave it to Melissa as the end of the summer gift, and it has all our names that were on staff that summer. And so I think about plus we sing your songs all the time. But I love it. I, like, would love to go back to Hopetown because I, that shaped me. Mm. And I was, like, a summer intern, you know, little high school baby helping out. and um. It's amazing when you're running some kind of a camp that also shapes and grows yes. the people who are working. Yes. Good work. Um, <laughs> well, you know, my, one of my biggest memories of you is, I may have said this to you before, but you, I think, must have been in charge of, de- well, two things, downstairs cleanup, mm-hmm. and it was the Dixie Chicks were in their, like, heyday, and you were singing Wide Open Spaces oh, into yeah. the broom. <laughs> And my other, we, Melissa, I forgot, I mean, I'm so glad I'm remembering to tell you this. So Melissa just taught on this verse about, I need to look it up, but about garbage, about, I can't remember what it was, but something about our garbage. And you know what I'm going to say? The story? Oh, yes. Maggots. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes, we... There, we had to take our trash to the dump back then, which now there's a trash service and we don't have to fool with it. But praise God, we put it in the back of a Jeep. We of a Jeep. That's Why did we do that? Like a truck. <laughs> <laughs> the two of us start drove it to the dump and halfway there, it fell out mm-hmm. and we had to pick it up. And out of the trash bag fell all these maggots <laughs> all over us. <laughs> We were laughing so hard, maybe crying too. Yeah, both. <laughs> but it, like, honestly, we just watched Inside Out too. It's so yes, wonderful. So I loved good. your post. I used all your questions oh, that you posted on Ellie, Instagram. So Go sweet. check this out if y'all haven't seen them. Um, but I literally, like, the combination in that first movie of the the sadness or just like the over you were, it was so gross but it is a core memory of mine like i cannot believe i have to do this yes and then something that could have been really hard turned into like a point of connection and yes. joy and yes. i'm like 
what in the world yes. is so beautiful? It's so true. We had so much fun with the maggots <laughs> and each other. <laughs> and each other. Uh, we didn't have to do it alone. I know. That's Hang right. On. Exactly. Okay. So as we jump in, I have to read this because it is astounding. <laughs> and I'm so incredibly proud of you. 500 million global streams of your music. Ellie. Isn't that incredible? crazy? Incredible. And 500,000 copies of your book sold. It's wild. It's wild. It's a wild thing. I was not, I'm not a numbers person. So I it, literally, people will be like, how's your book doing? I'm like, good, I hope. I just trust <laughs> it's going to end up. I got a great team. Mm. No idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it when they announced that, they surprised me. And I was dumbfounded. And I just started crying. And I was like, um, it was really humbling. Mm -hmm. I think to get my favorite thing about music is that it's a bridge builder, connecting our stories to each other. And then for me, connecting our story to the most beautiful story I know in the gospel. And and I'm like, that's so many bridges. <laughs> you know, it's, I, yes. just, I just so kept seeing bridges, bridges fr from, you know, feeling alone to feeling less alone, from hopelessness to hope. And I just... Oh, man, I'm, I'm so grateful. Mm. Yeah, it feels like a a, a gift to get mm. to do that. And I like it. Well, I it like is certainly a gift like to us. <laughs> See? And so yes. I'm like, that's, what is that? Um, is it the G.K. Chesterton quote when you're, like, you find your purpose when mm. you're, like, great the world's deep hunger and your gladness or something? The world's deep hunger mm. and your deep joy or gladness. Yes. And that is... Uh, yeah, uh, that's what it feels like I mm. still get to do. And I'm mm. so thankful for that. Well, us too. <laughs> so we're going to talk about all those things. But before that, will you talk a little bit about your family, mm -hmm. your amazing kiddos? Absolutely. Um, so and Drew, obviously. Yes, I'm married, Drew's my best guy friend that I swear never date, which I always <laughs> say. But in college, he was like a dear friend. Mm. Um, and I totally had him in the friend zone. And so glad, um, like just highly recommend marrying a friend. Like mm -hmm. that's so much a part of what a marriage is and a partnership is in, in that way is a friendship. Um, there's all the love and butterfly feelings too, but we had that solid foundation of a friendship. And I'm so grateful for him. So um, he's in a band called Drew Holcomb and the Neighbors. They're in the Americana world, touring, writing songs. He also loves golf. That feels like kind of a part-time job. Like he, he, he loves it that much. He loves wow. it. Um, and he's found a way because he's super smart logistical ninja kind of guy and he comes by it very honestly from his grandfather grand chubby was his grandfather's name oh. and he loved hunting and fishing and and he was a taxidermist he would like you know whatever stuff whatever he killed kind of crazy and he would invite his grandkids and everybody he loved into that and mm -hmm. that is drew holcomb he literally is just invites friends he connects people and so he really does it just on the road never plays on the weekend when he's at home he finds kind of time within the work hour which i requested humbly since he has to be gone a lot of weekends yes. um, and it's been a really fun so he loves he loves golf too and then we have three kids emmy lou huck and rivers lulu is about to be 12 um Man. it's crazy huck in a few weeks will turn nine and then rivers in the fall will turn six so there we're in like the five and three quarters eight and three quarters yes. 11 and three quarters <laughs> land <laughs> those are They're important beautiful. quarters mm -hmm. yeah. beautiful humans oh man we it's my favorite work i've ever done is being a mom i think and a wife i just that family that work of family it is work and it takes a lot of intention but mm. man it is so wonderful mm. There once were siblings who, who loved God and each other. other. They wore feathers and sequins and in every bright color. color. You think it's going to work? I don't know why that audition wouldn't earn us a spot in Kane's band. Oh, I'm so hoping it does. But in the meantime, at least they sent us a copy of their new children's book. 
I'm so blessed. And if you all didn't know, Kane wrote a kid's book. They took the message of their song that we love, I'm so blessed, to create a lyrical picture book where kids will follow personified fruits, Tay-Tay Tangerine, Logo Lemon, and Maddie Mellon through their daily lives as they encounter challenges and frustrations, but learn how to praise God still. I'm So Blessed invites kids and parents to sing about God's blessings in every circumstance. Pre-order I'm So Blessed anywhere you buy books. Then head to imsoblessedbook.com to be entered for a chance to win a VIP experience for you and three others to see Kane in concert in 2025. And maybe they'll have us with them. We can only hope. You'll also get free downloadable coloring pages and posters of the book characters. Go to imsoblessedbook.com to redeem your bonuses. Okay, we're going to talk about books and music both, okay. but let's talk music first. Okay. I loved hearing you talk a few minutes ago just about what it does. And so will you just tell us first just how did you find your way to music? Mm, absolutely. So I grew up in a very musical family. My mm-hmm. dad is a producer, so he and and he was his first you know records he produced was Amy Grant, which is still to my like eight year old brain in the eighties. I still think that's so epic. I'm <laughs> such a fan is. of who she is, and she's become a friend Aww. and um, a mentor of mine, which I'm so grateful for that. Mm. Um, very full circle, sweet sweetness. But I grew up singing background vocals, you know, in the studio. So I was around music all my life. Never thought I'd do music because I also saw as a kid, even though I loved music, saw that it could transform a moment, bring hope to somebody who was at the end of their rope and heard stories like that all the time. So that was the one side of music that I saw. It's power to bring hope and connection. The other side that I saw on a realistic stance, Nashville kid, is that It is really hard on families. Mm. And so I just made a little note to self. And my dad, if he was here, would talk about how he was um, really, I mean, studios had to rent for 24 hours at a time. So you were on a deadline and you had to finish the record. It's so different now. But it was, he would, he has really like about face from a workaholic kind of standpoint and really came home. And it's his and my mom's like, active work of repentance in that way has been a, has had a profound impact on my life um just to be like oh you can make mistakes and say you're sorry and change and it mm-hmm. and heal and mm-hmm. th- i'm so grateful for that um but i was very aware that music could be really tough on families and it was tough on my family so um cuz my dad missed a lot of our childhood growing up mm-hmm. so i just was like no to self do not do music. Do not marry a musician. Good. We're good here. But but play music and sing it and enjoy it. So I was like a bad version of Taylor Swift in college. <laughs> Truly, I was writing songs about my heart getting broken and singing them in the stairwell of my dorm. And um, it sounds really good in the stairwell. Echo is really nice. And um, the reverb in there is great. And I didn't want to keep my roommates up. So I would sing these songs about getting my heart broken. And what would happen every night that I did that is girls would line the stairwell. And really? I've never heard that story. It is it is crazy. And sometimes sober, sometimes not, mm. oftentimes crying. And mm. they would end up sitting down. I'd have my eyes closed and I'd look up and I'd be like, whoa, there's kind of a lot of people in here. And these girls would sit on the steps and just start telling me their story. Wow. Because I played a song and I would be like, oh. Hey, by the way, I'm Ellie. So nice to meet you. And so I learned um, in college that music is a bridge builder, connecting mm. our stories. And if you fast forward to getting around to marrying Drew, and I got my master's in education, sang and rapped in my classroom all no. the time. Had way <laughs> too much fun. I am big pentameter. We like got the basketball <laughs> up in there. I mean, we got Eminem, the clean version playing. It uh-uh. was, I loved teaching. I loved it. And, um, and anyway, so I always thought that I would do music in that way, like mm. just to process my life and to inspire my kids in my classroom. Well, fast forward, I'm a Mary musician. He convinces me to quit my teaching job and join his band. And the first thing we do is pack up and go volunteer for a week at for a month at Young Life Camp. 
And at Young Life, they have this thing called special music where you're playing a song every night and then hanging out around camp and you're kind of a part of the gospel presentation. Mm. And I called my mom and dad after that first week of Young Life camp and I said, I am firing on all cylinders because Mm. as it turns out, music is still a bridge builder, but now I'm getting to literally use music to connect people's stories to the ultimate bridge builder, Jesus, Mm. who's like death to life. You know, like this beautiful, um, the most beautiful story. And so uh, I thought I would be on Young Life staff. I didn't think I'd be a musician. I was like, cool, I'm going to be on Young Life staff. This is going to be great. And ended up quitting my teaching job, told my principal I'd be back in a year or two when we ran out of money because we had no money and funds and just living paycheck to paycheck. I was our insurance. Mm. And so joined, ended up just joining Drew's band and that steadily grew over the years. And I quit his band when I did a year on the road with Emmy Lou, 32 states in Canada by the time she was six months old. Wow. 32 Ellie. states again by the time she was one. And when she started walking, we were in a conversion van. So this is not like bus touring like we do now. This was like in a car or a sprinter van. Don't recommend it. Like, I mean, it was great. She's the best traveler now, Mm. but it was really hard. And, um, And so when she, I, it was a huge deal for me. We were growing in our career. And I really felt like I was supposed to get home with her and be a stay at home mom which is kind of what I thought I always wanted to do. It's what my mom did, and we had so much fun growing up. So I was like, in, let's do that. And I will never forget when I was pregnant with her, started writing songs, um, scripture into songs to help combat worry. Mm. All of a sudden, I became a mom, even when I was pregnant, and I was so worried about mm. her. Um, and this gets into all of your stuff. So mm. I needed to be singing the truth over myself. I was memorizing scripture with a friend of mine who battles depression um, really severely as well. And that was grounding us and bringing light to places that were really dark. And so I started writing scripture in a song. What I thought was for my friend, Annie, and for myself, Mm. this new mom. Um, who every hiccup and move, I was like, are you okay? (laughs) You know, and so I'd be like needing to sing the truth. The Do Not Worry song from Matthew that Mm. I wrote was was written during that time. The Valley, there's there's songs that I can point to specific fears that I was facing. And I was like, I need to remember this. And for whatever reason, the way God wired me is when I sing, it helps me believe. Mm. And I think singing and worship is an embodied form of faith and yes. prayer. And so mm-hmm. um, I started writing songs, just what I thought was for myself and my friend. And that just opened up. I was like, Drew, I'm sorry. I thought I was writing songs for the band, but they keep accidentally being about Jesus. And he just said, babes, write whatever is in you. Let whatever is in you out. You don't need to feel like you need to write for my band. And for whatever reason, when he said that, within maybe a nine-month period, it was right at the beginning when I got pregnant with Emmy Lou. So I hadn't even quit yet, you know. But I, at the end of nine months, I think I'd written 45 songs. Wow. So I had, like, wow. I just was like, oh. And it was healing for me. It has always been like therapy for me to mm. write. And so, and it still is. It is still, people say, what inspires your music? And I'm like, suffering, doubt. Mm hardship, which I feel like a generally sunny kind of personality, yes. but I struggle with all that like anybody. And mm. and music is the bomb and the way forward through that with me. So yeah, I never knew that I would do music, felt the invitation. I was in counseling as well at the time. And um, I loved my counselor, Nita. I think mm. I've talked about this before. She She's like, think salsa. Mm. When I went in, because I was like, I have this friend. Really, I needed counseling, <laughs> but I was more comfortable talking about my friend. <laughs> and she goes, salsa, think salsa, mild, medium, hot. Mild is coming in here once a year to talk about your friend or whatever other issues. Medium will be need to know basis. As things come up, we can talk through them. Hot will be laying your personality out across the gospel exposing Mm. some pretty serious like unhealthy patterns that are in your life that you're not aware of at all Um, and it will be hard and you will not want to come back every time so you can choose mild or medium but in about five to ten years it's all going to hit the fan and it's going to fall apart 
or you can choose hot. Wow. You haven't told us that before. I love that story. It was a, as a people pleaser, you know, seven on the Enneagram avoiding pain. I like, I remember just weeping. I was like hot and weeping on my way home because I knew that something was off. I didn't know what, but I felt so relieved that someone was like, you need a little help. And, um, and that started changing me because I think, you know, in the South, in the church, I don't know what it is. No one said it from the pulpit. Be good. Following Jesus is about being good, but that's what I caught. And I was really good at being good. Like, I could even let you in a little bit to be like, I'm really struggling with this, but I'm repenting and loving God. You know, I just was like pretty good at lying first to myself. If something was hard, I'm fine. I'm fine. And then therefore to God and everyone else, he could obviously see what was going on the whole time, but I could not. And so I learned that I was sort of a liar. Like, um, and I didn't even know. Um, um, I, I not pathologic, pathological or whatever, but just right. like not honest with myself yeah. which is probably the better way to say it. Um, and as I began to tell the truth, it was, it, I always say counseling, I would rather, Drew and I were touring in a, you know, Volvo station wagon in the time. And truly, this is a seven on the Enneagram stuff. It would feel better to me to open the door and roll out onto the internet. I didn't want to die. <laughs> I didn't want to die, but I was like, I think I could open it and just roll in this grass. It looks pretty long over there. That felt better than having a conflict with my husband, mm. like, which is obviously a problem in marriage. <laughs> like, so I was so, it was so hard. I mean, it, always, it felt like, um, there's this quote that my friend Crystal Wells says that coming alive feels like dying mm. sometimes. And it sort of felt like that, like I was becoming real, like in Velveteen Rabbit. Mm. Um, but it hurt. Yeah. It hurt so much. And I had a lot to grieve um, and that I hadn't. And so um, it was it was this beautiful process of coming home to myself and then to my marriage and then to my family and trickle down all the relationships. So God started inviting me. I started sensing this invitation. Would you be willing? I was writing all these songs in the process. Would you be willing to go be a mess in front of people mm-hmm. and share these songs that have helped you become real? I've helped you hold on to the truth when worry was dominating your mind. And I promptly answered, no, (laughs) I am definitely not doing that because I was so judgmental. Like, Mm. uh, and honestly, Sissy, what I'm talking about is shaping me at Hopetown. Y'all had the most gentle conversations with me Mm. about it being okay to not be okay. In the most gentle way. Mm. I know you could probably see all that as as I was serving and be like, mm. maggots are great. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. Um, but, wow. but truly, I it was there were a uh, few voices like y'all at Hope Town. Um, I had a, a youth group leader who met one time, one time coffee with me. That's all. She wasn't my discipleship group leader or anything, but she just said, you know, Ellie, like, we want to skip over the broken parts of our stories, but that's where all the power is. Like, Mm. God knows we're broken. Like, but that's where the power of the gospel and of salvation and redemption and reconciliation, that's where all of that happens is in the midst of the broken stuff. If we're not broken, we don't need the power. Mm. And I was like, so there are, conversations like that. And I say that because I think sometimes as older people, we think, I don't have time to mentor anybody. I don't have time to, or I don't know much. I still feel like that. I don't know that much. Um, But just a little time and intention can have sort of a massive Mm, impact um, on somebody's life. So I eventually landed, and I'm so thankful on um, the answer to to give a surrendered yes to mm. where it felt like God was leading me. And it my biggest fear was that doing music would harm my family. Mm. And um, and so I wrestled with God. I'm like, I will go and do this, 
but I'm going to need to bargain with you because if this is going to harm my family, I'm out. I'm not Mm -hmm. out. And since Tim promising, I have some very Ebenezer moments where he talked about that. I think it's Psalm 91, where I will hide you and your family underneath the shelter of my wings. And I am here to tell you, it's not that it has never been hard. There's, sure. it's, it's hard to do any job yes. and parent. Like, it's hard to parent solo as your only job. So props yeah. to all you, like, stay-at-home moms and dads out there. Um, and props to all you working parents. Props to all you single parents. It is hard, beautiful, holy work. Um, but I, I, it is so beautiful to get your marching orders to me mm-hmm. from the one who made you and knows you. Because if it's his will for me, it's also his will for my family. And we get to invite them in. We talk all the time to them like, I know it's hard that mom and dad have to leave. Because it is. It's like still painful. We have tons of boundaries that I have in place with that. I, I, we are really intentional with our kids um, yes, and right. have to be. Um, and I love that. You know, that's part of a gift. It's like, okay, if we're going to be gone, when are we bringing y'all out on the road? When are you coming to help learn merch? And when are you going to sing with us on stage? And we're going to talk about what a stage is for. And it's to bring connection and hope and joy Mm -hmm. and comfort. It is not about you. It's Mm -hmm. not about you. And so there's all of these gifts. And yes, we have to go on the road sometime. But man, we have swaths in the summer where we are like full on family and not every job allows that. So just like there's a cost and a benefit to everything, there's a cost and a benefit to faith. I mean, it's like, pick up your cross and follow me. It's like, that costs something. Love Mm -hmm. will cost you everything, you know? And so um, getting to, I'm so glad that I didn't let fear keep me from the calling and the invitation that God put before me because it felt like, I mean, I did a Kickstarter to launch my first record because we had no money, no savings. Dave Ramsey would not approve. (laughs) 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 Um, But we couldn't afford it. So we did a Kickstarter. I remember we were trying to raise $40,000 in 50 days. And I remember just feeling like I was going to throw up before we hit go on that. And Drew being like, we don't have to, we don't have to do this. It's okay. And I just was like, I I got on my face on the floor and I was like, God, this is what you have. I will, I will hit go. If this is what you want, I'll go. But I need you to be sure. (laughs) And since this piece, even though I was scared, that that gave me enough courage to hit go on that thing. And I'm telling you what, that Kickstarter funded in two days and funded 250% over what we were aiming to raise, which raise, which allowed us to um, really h- hire a nanny, which is what mm. I needed to come with us on the road so I could still bring Emmy Lou and have mm. her with me in the process. So it was, and I had my, <laughs> had my first tour after that because there were house shows that we sold. Um, and I did probably 28 of those. Wow. And, um, and my first house show, I'll never forget. And I would say this has marked my whole music career. And we can kind of wrap up on the music part that, with this. But it was a show in um, Kentucky. It was my friend Sandy Adams. Um, and she was a Young Life uh, person that we met who was an adult guest on committee in Kentucky and um, in Lexington and or maybe Louisville, can't remember. But I went. And she had this beautiful dinner, invited all these people. Her house was awesome. I was like, this is going to be so fun. She was like, actually, I wanted to invite more people than could fit into my house. I wanted to invite a lot of people. So we actually are going to do the concert at a different venue. And you can go to this address, sound check, and we'll all be there in an hour. And I was like, great. The sun is setting. It's getting pretty dark. And I take a right into where the directions tell me. And I'm like, this has got to be some sort of sick joke. I was like, this is a graveyard. This is a graveyard. And it's dark. And why, what am I doing with my life, God? <laughs> like, why am I doing this? And I'm trying to turn around, but obviously don't want to drive on anyone's grave. So I'm following this hill up and in, deeper and deeper into this literal graveyard. And I'm like, God, I told you, this isn't, this is crazy. I'm crazy. What am I doing with my life? Why did I leave my baby at home? You know, mm. um, um, I got to the top of the road and at the top of the hill was this little white chapel mm. and light was pouring out the windows and the door was open. I remember that too. 
And what I felt like God said to me in that moment is, I want you to go to the grave places Mm. and sing hope and sing light. And um, I played the show. And after the show, this couple came up to me and they had buried their six-month-old in that same graveyard a month before. And they were just sobbing and they were like, we have been so sad. We have been grieving. And you have now given us a soundtrack of hope to mm-hmm. to come alongside our grief and our sorrow, and we can't thank you enough. And and that has been my privilege all of these wow, years. Um, so, wow, yeah. what a beautiful story! It's been never sweet. heard any of that. Yes, it's been really sweet. all the people wow. who are thankful. You said yes. <laughs> Two of whom are sitting in this room right now and all the ways we benefited yes. from you saying yes to that, Ellie. I cannot even imagine how many people would say how grateful they are mm-hmm. that you said yes to that. Thanks. I, I am a big fan of the surrendered yes now because mm. it has been such, there's been such treasure and, and desperation mm. even. Like, I can't do this, God. You said to do this. How am I supposed to do this? And to get to see him provide. The scene that comes to mind is the Indiana Jones scene um, when he's, I think it's the Temple of Doom maybe, and he's looking for the Holy Grail and he comes to that chasm Mm-hmm. And the directions, the map says, walk. Like, and it literally looks like he's about to walk into the abyss and his certain death. And as he walks, the ground comes up beneath mm-hmm. his feet. And wow. that, it, that is probably the best image I can describe of, of following mm-hmm. Jesus on the, of the surrendered yes journey mm-hmm. for, for me. Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thanks. Okay, Sissy, we're going to play a game I made up called I Regret. Okay, coach me on how to play. You start every sentence with I Regret, and then you name something true. I'll go first. I regret not eating ice cream after every meal for the first 30 years of my life when my metabolism was working. (laughs) Okay, I regret trying to water ski last week like I was still in my 30s. Okay, can I get you some Advil? I've had one already. My cardiologist tried to play this game with me recently during an appointment. He began naming things he regretted that I had not done in the last year, like lose weight or exercise more. (laughs) And I told him to speak for himself. Well, you know who could help us with the I regret game? Field of Greens. The movie with Kevin Costner about baseball? No, not dreams. Field of Greens. Field of Greens is an organic superfood. Whole fruits and vegetables, no extracts, all made in the U.S., organic and non-GMO. Each fruit and veggie in Field of Greens was doctor-selected to support your heart, lungs, kidney, immune system, and metabolism. My cardiologist will love that. Yes, he will. And one scoop a day in your favorite drink is all it takes. So easy and delicious. Each container is good for 30 servings. Field of Greens is backed by a better health promise. At your next checkup, your doctor will notice your improved health or your money back. See, David, no regrets. It's safe for children, and my favorite flavor is lemon lime, but I'm about to try wild berry. Let's get you started with 15% off and free shipping. Visit fieldofgreens.com and use promo code RBG. That's promo code RBG at fieldofgreens.com. Okay, so let's shift to books. <clears throat> Fighting Words. Yeah. Expanded and updated, which we're so excited about. Which Emmy Lou, my daughter's like, what the heck does that even mean, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, that's a good question, babe. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> We'll so, say what it means. She well, that's a great question. It is. We know what it um, means. But. It is. It just has ten additional entries in in it. A new introduction. Um, some new art. That new art. Some new mm-hmm. artwork. Um, as another scripture memory invitation. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really didn't want to do it to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, when they when they approached me about it, I knew I'm was an English major. I have an editor, you know, thing mm-hmm. in my brain. And when they asked me to do the book, um, I was like, no, uh, no, that will be too much work. And But I've been writing these Fighting Word Friday posts mm-hmm. on Instagram. Mm-hmm. So like, it's mainly so that. Right. And then mm-hmm. we'll extend it. Um, and I was like, you know, I had 100 days. I think I said everything I need to say, you know. Mm-hmm. And they're like, would you please pray about it? And um, I, my, Drew's grandmother, 
um, passed during this email kind of conversation Mm. that was happening. And one of the things that she did before she passed um, was she wrote down 99 lifer verses. She called them her lifer verses. And in her definition, she wrote them on little note cards. You can barely read them because her handwriting was abysmal at the end. But she um, she says a life or verse is the verses that you go to over and over and over mm. again. And if they were a stone, they'd be smooth from how many times you've reached for them in your pocket mm. and wow. held on to them. Wow. And I just was so inspired by that. And I was mm. like, man, I, you know, I have like a hundred days. I wonder, like, I was like, what are, I, I just decided to write down for me what some of my life or verses was. And there were five of them that were not included in the book. Wow. How did that happen? I'm not sure. Wow. But I was like, okay, I think I actually have some more things to say. And so it was a really beautiful thing to kind of extend that. Mm. And the other thing that was, that has become a gift for me, because Fighting Words was born n- not out of a book idea. Mm. Um, or a business plan. Um, and when they presented that 500,000 copies sold, um, the, my um, editor said this. And she was like, this book, Fighting Words, did not start with a book idea. Mm. It it was one conversation with one hurting friend. Mm. And, and that was my friend who was battling depression. And mm. we decided that... It, the lies were really strong and loud and we needed to replace the lies with something stronger. I think of the worry monster all the Mm. time. It's like, you're the boss of the worry monster. So speak the truth, Mm. like speak the truth. Um, You need something stronger than the lie. And that for me has been God's word. And I have tons of questions about God's word. I don't understand all of it. It's a wild and wonderful and poetic, crazy book. Mm. But it it has also been the bomb that has comforted my weary soul. And it has been the light that has lit up some of the darkest nights of my life. And, and ultimately it's become the promises that I've held on to, but they've really held on to me. Mm. Mm. Um, And so it, it, that book feels like a stack of paper Ebenezer's to me of Mm. stories of how God's word has brought healing and comfort. And it's really just an invitation to other people. I say this in the intro. I'm like, this isn't really a book. It's an invitation to a living relationship Mm. with a living God who also gave us a living word that is alive and active and is made for you. And so it's an invitation to come feast at the table Mm. and to lay down in the green pastures of his promises and find rest. And so the fact that people have done that and now the book is, y'all know this, books are so interesting because it's a slower, you know, you, the feedback is slower than a song, Mm -hmm. a song you listen to in three minutes. You can't read a whole book in three minutes. Mm -hmm. And so the stories that have come in of mm. how, you know, just like a song could meet somebody on a day. I was reading day 73 and this happened. And it's not dated or anything. It just is God loving on his kids. Yeah. <laughs> and he's so good at it. He's so good at mm. it. So we're going to pause long enough for you to order that right now. Yes. And then alongside <laughs> that, you are also going to grab a copy of All of My Days, your newest musical offering which is in heavy rotation in both our cars and homes and at Hopetown. They're seeing it. Yes, yes. And it's that project is solely wrapped around the Psalms. And will you talk about, first let's talk about why you created that. And Mm -hmm. then is there one that's been particularly meaningful to you? Absolutely. Um, So the record really, I've always wanted to make a Psalms record. I think as a recovering perfectionist, for my whole life, the Psalms have felt like, oh, thank God. Mm. It's okay to be human. It's mm. okay to doubt and to wrestle. It's okay to have ecstatic joy. Like, mm. and so I felt um a lot of relief in the Psalms for my whole life and hope. Um, and a feeling of, I guess, feeling less alone in the doubt. I didn't know it was okay to do- I just, it just is a beautiful human book of poetry. And it makes sense as a songwriter that it resonates with me. 
Um, but when I did this extended version, they let me, so they were wanting me to, B&H was wanting me to pull from all different books of the Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, Psalms. So I couldn't pick, this is probably why I missed a lot of my life verses, is because I had to limit the mm. number of Psalms that I chose. Okay. And so, and I love so many of them. Um, and so I, um, when when we decided to do the extended version of the book, I just thought, if my invitation is for people to memorize God's word and bury truth in their heart, if I really want that to happen and would like to facilitate that more, I'm singing Memory Mondays every every Monday on Instagram. So if you want to sing scripture with me, come find me on Instagram every Monday. I'm singing what's true. But the Psalms record was really, what if I could create like an extended, because those are 30 seconds, those songs on, you know, 45 seconds mm-hmm. at most. What if I could extend, and my prayer on inst- on Memory Mondays is that those would be little patches of light and rest for people's souls in a scrolling, fast-paced mm-hmm. world. Um, and I need it for myself, and my prayer is that it would be that for other people, and that God would meet people suddenly and kind of surprisingly with just a little space to rest and breathe in the light and the truth. Um, and it is, it was a really fun thing to start to dream about and think about as we were releasing this new book. I said, what if I wrote an extended green pasture song for every Psalm that I was adding Mm -hmm. and then included some of David's biggest hits like Psalm 23 and Psalm 139, (laughs) because those are huge for me. And then I covered thy word, which is the only non, it's grounded in Psalm 19. Mm -hmm. Five um, or one nineteen five. You'll have to check the reference on that. Can't remember. Not good with numbers, <laughs> but it is thy word is a lamp into my feet mm. and a light into my path. And and um, when I was eight years old, I went to my first concert, mm. and it was Amy Grant in an arena. DC Talk opened, which was oh, so wow. awesome. And um, but when I walked, we had gone backstage with mom and dad, and then came back out, and the concert had already started. The entire arena was holding up their arms in worship, singing thy word. Mm. And there was something that stirred in my eight-year-old heart that was just like, God's word really is a treasure. Mm. This must, there must be something to this. And so for all the days of my life, I've held on to God's word like like a treasure. And so um, that's why thy word is on there. Um, But I... We'll never forget, in terms of a song being the most connected for me, um, Psalm 23 has been a bomb. Um, When I was writing for the record, um, I would start singing these songs for my kids. And for whatever reason, my youngest rivers who's a wild man and full of energy, um, singing Psalm 23 over his, all of, which is all, all of my days. It's like the title of that. And, and he needs a lot of sensory input. So I'm um, singing that and, and kind of like putting my hand over his heart to the rhythm of that has been what he has requested every night wow. to go to bed. And so, um, it has been a really sweet place of rest for us because some days are pretty hard with him. <laughs> they can mm. be really hard, but we end um, mm. we end singing about how the goodness and the mercy will follow us all the days mm. of our life, and we need that. We need. Mm. I need that reminder as a parent. He needs that reminder as for, with what what's going on in his life. Mm. So do my other kids. Um. Our work is to remember as children of God where we came from and where we're all headed back home to. And so um, that song has been um, a green pasture for me and for my family. And so if it is that for anybody else, great. But when I was writing it, I was like, already I know this is good because this is, I always call myself a selfish songwriter because I'm like, if this is good for me or my people or someone that I love, that's actually all it needs to be. God knows whoever else needs to hear it, but like, I'm going to write this for this moment. And that has been um, a green pasture for, for our, our family. My kids are walking around the house singing all of my days, you know, mm. and that is, um, yeah, it's such, it's such a privilege. And to think I would be, you know, some people in music may be like, I want to play 
Red Rocks or I want to play Carnegie Hall, the Ryman. I've had the privilege of playing some of those places, but truly my dream, like my Red Rocks, is I want kids at camp to sing my songs and families to sing mm. around their kitchen tables yes. and, and and to be any part of helping people hold on to the light and the truth. Mm. Um, that's, my, that's my Red Rocks. Mm. <laughs> For me, I'm like, give or take playing there. It's su- That'd be super cool one day, but I'm literally like, I am living in my dream <laughs> right now. I'm grateful. Mm. So are we. So <laughs> Thanks, are we. Y'all. Yeah. So speaking of camp, one of the things that emerged from Hope Town years ago was this saying of, I want to know the God you know. Mm. And Ellie, I mean, even thinking about what we were going to ask you, that's something we wanted to say in our time with you because mm-hmm. we both feel that way. And I think at the end of this episode, I feel like everybody who listens is going to respond in that way to the invitation that God is is giving through you, mm-hmm. through your music, through your words. I mean, through your words on paper, through your words, all the spaces, just who you are. Ellie is such a gift. I just am so grateful for you, for every kid at camp that is singing about green pastures mm-hmm. and every family that's singing around the table, both of ours included. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't Thank be any you. more grateful for you, friend. Well, I feel the same way about y'all. Oh, wow. <laughs> I always say it, but I'm like, Thank you for being beacons of hope on Instagram. Wow. <laughs> so figure out how to parent out here. Um, and man, knowing God is the most wonderful adventure that mm-hmm. I could ever recommend to anybody. Mm-hmm. And the in the depths of our in the if, and I and I really can say this more not from having these high highs of seeing him provide and, and make all the good things happen, but it's it's been the empathy and the companionship and the comfort and the hope that has held me at my most broken, mm-hmm. aching, breaking places that I am like, there is no denying for me that he is real and that he is with us mm. in the full spectrum, in the full life. God gives us life to the full. Mm. So he is with us in the full spectrum of what life has to offer us, the joy and the maggots and the trash <laughs> and the yes. times when we don't know how to parent. Mm. And I will say this, just like ending on this, that one thing that has been transformative for me, I just did this adventure with God called the 19th Annotation, mm. where you, med- you meditate or and pray for an hour a day for nine months and meet with a spiritual director every week. And one of the most transformative things that God did for me during that time, well, gosh, so much. Um, But he showed me over and over again. I was solo parenting a lot um, because Drew was on tour. And um, he showed me over and over and over again, none of us are ever solo parenting. <laughs> Even if we're a single parent, they're the one who made us and who we belong to knows what we need as parents, as moms and dads, and knows what our kids need. And we can ask him. Mm. I That sounds so simple, but I get into this, oh, I got to figure out what to do. And if I can take a deep breath and say, God, I don't know. I don't I don't know how to best parent my kid. And I feel Mm. like I got to kind of make a quick decision here, Mm. you know, like help me. Um, It has been the most beautiful thing to know that Drew and I are co-parenting with the God who loves our kids and knows them better than we know them and loves them better than we could ever love them Mm. and who is going to be with them every step of the way, even when we are not. And what a deep what a deep comfort as a parent. Mm. So I am deeply grateful for that and also still have moments of panic and like, oh no, what do I do? We got to fix something. We got to change something. Uh. So, um, but if I can get back to that, oh God, you love them more than, Mm. more than even I do. How can, show me how to love, show me how to parent, show me how to draw boundaries. So that has just been 
the a, a huge relief. It is cha- has been a game changer for me, mm. and I am like highly recommend co-parenting with God. <laughs> <laughs> He's already in Amen. it with you, but participating in that. I yes. just can't, can't recommend it enough. <laughs> Amen to <laughs> that. We are not alone. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we love you, friend. I yes, love we you. Thank you for being with us. Thank y'all, and thank you for helping us all feel a little less alone on the journey. Mm. Grateful for you. You too. David, what a team we have that we get to call friends who help make this podcast possible. Amanda Young, our operations manager. Chris Starrett, our engineer and producer. Our management team at KCH. And we are thrilled to be a part of the That Sounds Fun Network. Our music was created by the insanely talented Dave Haywood of Lady A. And if this podcast felt helpful to you, please consider subscribing, liking, sharing, all the things. We are grateful for you and cheering you on always.